marks the 25th anniversary of a string of bright white lights seen over the valley in the late evening hours. And it's just kept people talking and curious for years. I was just a kid when this happened and it was like I was obsessed with it. I wanted really? to read every single news article about it. <laughs> I was convinced this was like the invasion was days away. That it was going to happen. Huh? Yeah, <laughs> man, this is so cool. This and it happened right here in Phoenix. Uh, we're bringing in uh, Dr. Lynn right now to talk to us just about the, the mystery of all of this year, 25 years on. Uh, just kind of tell me, you know, uh, what the legacy of the Phoenix Lights is. Actually, the Phoenix Lights now worldwide is hailed as the most witnessed, most documented, most important mass anomalous sightings in modern history, if not all of history. Um, we have come such a long way in 25 years. The story continues to evolve. Um, it's so exciting because on Sunday, uh, next Sunday, we have a wonderful, wonderful community event at the Scottsdale Hark and Shade Theater where we show our documentary. It's one of our dozen international film festival awards or so proud of that and uh it's very exciting to see it on the big screen as well as speakers we have navajo rangers who are law enforcement studying these phenomena and there's a lot going on in the navajo range we also have um, new witnesses that had up close and personal sightings during the mass sighting as well as um our own rock star and uh, uh phoenix lights witness alice cooper is going to be doing a remote q a and uh i have to say for anybody that doesn't know about the Phoenix Lights, while thousands of people were looking skyward for a glimpse of the Hale Bob Comet, they also caught a glimpse of Mile, and we learned from the National UFO Reporting Center just a couple years ago that one of these phenomena, whether they were these orbs in rock solid formation um, in V shape or boomerang shape, and that's my video, by the way, <laughs> showing right now. Um, or actual craft. There were 10 different craft. If people go to the Phoenix Lights Network website, uh, they can look at the illustrations, beautiful illustrations by Larry Lowe, as well as animations. Two or more people had to see mm -hmm. the same craft. And whether it was one craft that could morph or the perspective from where the person was standing or an actual parade, which is what the uh, what was concluded because the mass sighting, whatever you've heard, wasn't just one or two hours. <laughs> it was many hours, over a dozen hours in over ten, four states. Wow. So tons of documented proof out there. But Dr. Lynn, I just want to know, tell us about your personal like connection to it. Where were you that night you took that video and what was going through your mind? Thanks for asking Desiree, because for me, it was just another night. I had actually mm -hmm. been photographing, witnessing and photographing these anomalous aerial phenomena. I call them UAP now. Um, in 1995, right outside our bedroom window, I captured 35 millimeter photographs, not only then, but two years later, two months before the mass sighting. Very unique collection. The only one with 35 millimeter, if you go on the photo page on the Phoenix Lights Network website, you can see this unique collection. Two months before the mass sighting, I caught the same massive over mile wide phenomena head on, wow. turning into a V shape <sighs> against the wind, according to air traffic controllers at the uh, Sky Harbor International Airport. It was over class oh. B restricted airspace, a thousand feet altitude. And then during the mass sighting, I caught the video. And for me, it was just another night. But then yeah, I found that's out that incredible, thousands. Dr. Lynn. I wish we yeah. could talk to you all morning. We have to wrap it up. Thank you for sharing your story. And uh, we can catch up with you and that documentary uh, in Scottsdale when it airs. So cool. Thanks, Dr. Lynn.